from El Pantera getting backed by Triple C of all people to the almighty closing the door on the Panther, here are the fighters' predictions for Yair Rodriguez versus Alexander Volkanovsky bout. I've got to start with Henry Cejudo's shocking prediction, where he's gone for Yair Rodriguez to win against Volk, because I can't believe it. Don't get me wrong, I think Yair's a fantastic fighter, and he'll ask some serious questions from the Aussie, but to say that he'll win? Come on, Henry, that's pushing it. To be fair to say Hudo, he rates Rodriguez really highly. In fact, at one point, he even claimed that he'd never take a fight against him because he doesn't want to deal with those lethal kicks that the Mexican keeps on throwing, which is why he thinks the featherweight champ will struggle too. Triple C explained how those leg kicks are one of the most underrated weapons in the UFC, and they throw you off your game so quickly that you don't even know what to do. This is high praise for someone like Yair, who was practically a nobody until a few years back. And Volk, well, he's the number two pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the UFC. Henry also analyzed how Alex usually finds it easy to handle fighters taller than him, but he won't experience similar success against Rodriguez because of his opponent's ability to use his reach. But the former double champ went a little safe, saying if the Aussie shows up with a different plan... All my respect to your champion, he connected me in the first round pretty good. He, uh, <laughs> he landed good punches and he took me to the ground. Then it's curtains for Yair, because there's no way he can deal with Volk's versatility. And that's exactly what the great has hinted at doing. He's known for putting on his smart hat, but what he's rarely given the credit for is how Volk never underestimates his opponents. He fights everyone on merit, and that's a major reason behind his success. Can you imagine anyone else in Volk's shoes right now? Someone like Conor McGregor or Michael Bisping would be tearing Yair a new one with their potty mouths, but not Alex. It's not his cup of tea. He approaches fights in a totally different manner, and good for him, especially when it's a tried and tested way. Not to mention, he's extremely intelligent and reads the game better than anyone, so it'd be quite stupid to get trapped by the most obvious game plan the UFC has ever seen. In fact, Volk had a lot of good things to say about the Mexican and detailed about how he'll be coming in with a totally different game plan because he knows the threat that Yair will bring to the octagon and better to be safe than sorry, right? For the fans thinking we'll see a passive version of the great, don't worry, there's no way the great actually steps into the octagon on the back foot. He'll still be aggressive as he always is. Maybe he'll just bide his time before bringing out the money shots, which is what Bryce Mitchell expects the featherweight champ to do. The American MMA's given his two cents on the UFC 290 clash and offered an interesting theory about how he expects the fight to go down. He talked about the strengths that Yair brings to the table, adding that we might see the great hanging back a little bit, you know, holding his aggression just a little bit more than he usually does. Bryce believes that this is the most effective approach against aggressive fighters because they only know one way to fight, and letting them tire themselves out is a brilliant plan. I agree, as it plays into Volkanovski's strengths, who's known for his never-ending gas tank. Mitchell also explained that this will lead to a battering in the latter rounds for Yair, ending in a knockout win for the Aussie, or a unanimous decision win. While most people are confident about Volk winning, there are some unpopular opinions too, like Sean O'Malley. Yep, for sugar, the best fighter on current form is the one and only Alexander Volkanovski. As much respect as he has for the Aussie, he thinks it's impossible to dominate someone like Yair Rodriguez. And that's why the X factor that El Pantera brings to the table will be too much for Volk to handle. Wow, that's a strong prediction, but he's a strong believer of how fighters like himself and the Panther are never out of the fight because of their ability to bring out the big blow at any second. I can't disagree. Yair's never out of the fight. And that's why he's getting the backing from Nate Landwehr too. The former M1 global featherweight champ has a lot of respect for Alex, as does most of the UFC world, but he's added that he doesn't expect him to have an easy time against Yair at UFC 290. If you ask me, it's an interesting prediction to say the least. He's not siding with Rodriguez, but saying that it's not easy to tame Wildcats like the Mexican. I just wanna thank all the people. Thank you, Boston. You guys live in an amazing city. Thank you all the people to come here and support me. Landwehr also went on a mini rant about how coaching tends to kill that wildness within UFC fighters, though he thinks that Rodriguez has it very much in abundance, which is something Volk will find tough to take on. Anything can happen in the fight game, according to Nate, and I can't say he's wrong there. We've seen far bigger upsets in the UFC, plus when you factor in wildcats like Yair, anything is possible. He explained that preparing for the fight won't be easy for Alex, because when you're entering a bout against someone predictable, it's easier no matter how formidable they are. 
Landwehr expects Yair to bring Razzle Dazzle to the canvas at UFC 290, and he's of the view that it won't be the most comfortable fight that Volk's ever fought. This is actually a spot-on prediction. El Pantera's style is the opposite of what Volkanovski wants to fight, and as per many fans too, this should be an interesting thing to look out for. If you've never seen Rodriguez in action, allow me to paint a picture. Basically, he's someone who flies into his bouts, fully aggressive and very unpredictable. You get the feeling that even he doesn't know what he's going to do next, which makes him a dangerous opponent for just about anyone in the promotion. On the other hand, you've got this man from down under, who tries his best to keep the entire fight under his control, thanks to his octagon IQ and ability to adapt to the challenges. That means you're getting two fighters with contrasting styles and that should make for a fun fight. Unfortunately, this could prove to be a disadvantage for Volkanovski, because he'll be uncomfortable not knowing what to expect, and that could put a shadow of doubt in his mind, which is normally enough to get you a win at this level. That said, I feel a lot of people are underestimating Volk, given that one of his major strengths is thinking on his toes, plus his capacity to neutralize just about anything that the opponent throws at him. It's not the first time he's taking on someone like Yair. And as far as Brandon Royval is concerned, this fight can only have one outcome, a dominant win for the great. Raw Dog isn't giving any chance to Yair purely because he thinks that Alex is the superior fighter. Be it experience, skill, strength, you name it, Volk's better in every regard. He highlighted how Volk's been fighting at welterweight, which gives him a huge leg up over his opponent, as he'll be able to overpower him with ease. Then he went into detail about the experience and the quality of fighters that Alexander's shared the octagon with. To me, this is a major takeaway from Royval's analysis, as experience plays a key role in all UFC fights. Whatever Rodriguez does in the octagon at UFC 290, it'll be something that Volk's already dealt with, and that gives him the upper hand in all their mini duels. Royval also believes that Yair's nothing but a dead man walking, implying how he probably made a mistake taking this fight. Yeah, folks, Brandon's not playing around. He thinks that Yair is very one dimensional, and there's no way that he wins this fight. To pile on the misery, even the Almighty is writing Yair off. No, not that Almighty, Arnold Allen. Yeah, the Brit thinks the fight will be a fun watch for everyone, but he's backing the best fighter in the division to go all the way. To be fair, he didn't completely close the door on Yair and says that he'll put up a good fight, producing something for the ages, yet it'll come up short cause Volkanovski is just too much for anyone in the division. That's probably how it'll play out, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a tenor on Yair if you are a betting man. It is that kind of a fight after all especially considering he's coming into this one after a defeat. So from the almighty closing the door on the Panther to Triple C of all people thinking there will be an upset, these were the fighters' predictions for Yair Rodriguez versus Alexander Volkanovsky.